Copyright laws apply to all contents of this video. Hello, Jamar Studios here, and this is our original fantasy action adventure, Like Water, The Next Age. Episode 5 I considered taking the implant, but had a change of heart once I realized the people who didn't accept it were forcefully taken to prison camps. So I gathered as much supplies as possible and drove off into the wastelands. I figured being a scientist who grew up on a farm meant I would be fine. I soon realized anywhere outside the metropolitan areas were referred to as wastelands for a reason. The water wasn't safe to drink, plus it was littered with wild animals and other things that were worse. I was constantly on edge, having to fend off all kinds of beasts, some of which I had never seen before. After three months, I was on the verge of running out of food, water and ammunition. Living in my car, which was out of fuel, no longer seemed like a viable option. So I was forced to walk, which I did for four days before coming to an abandoned bungalow in a countryside area. I slept there for two days and found it to be a quiet and peaceful area. So I cleaned up the place and found enough material to create a water purifying system based on a device that could turn urine into clean drinking water. I then created a small garden at the back of the building and before long I had hope for survival. Hey, said a voice from behind which made me jump and point a miniature shovel in my hand at, at a stranger showing a willingness to use it like a weapon. I mean you no harm. I'm just lost, said the man, who like me was a thin Caucasian man in his 30s. He looked like he had been wandering the lands for a while without any means to clean or feed himself. I knew it was risky, but I let him stay and share the little I had. This was partly due to the fact I felt sorry for him, but also partly due to the fact I was lonely. My name's Chris, revealed the man, as he offered his hand, while joining me by the fire. It was now evening and I had given him time to clean up and have some salad that I prepared earlier. Winston, I replied shaking his hand. There was a time I would eat about anything but a salad, joked Chris. How did you end up in the wastelands, I asked. I'm a Christian that got left behind, replied Chris. I see, I said. You? asked Chris. I'm not a Christian, I just didn't feel right about the implant system, I explained. I see, said Chris. The next morning, I awoke to find Chris cutting down a tree with an axe. What are you doing? I asked. Once upon a time, I worked in construction. I thought I'd put my skills to good use and not waste a day, answered Chris while he continued working. For a while, I would farm and maintain the water purification system that was now in full effect and Chris would build sheds, huts, fences and walls. Before long, other wanderers joined us and helped add value to the area and within two years we had created the little village known as Hope with a population of about 50 people. Chris helped put in place a parliamentary system which was used to govern the village and resolve any issues which at the time wasn't really needed but was done in anticipation of further growth. Then one day a young man named Matthew wandered into the village like we all had done in the past. He was strong, enthusiastic and seemed a perfect fit to help Chris's team of builders upgrade as well as maintain the village. Unknown to us, Matthew was a scout for a ruthless crew of bandits made up of about 20 men. After a week of blending with our community, Matthew opened the gates of our village to the bandits who came in without notice to create carnage. Chris and about 30 other men fought off the bandits, but not without casualties. The next morning, Matthew and seven surviving bandits were chained to a wall until a prison was built for them, while we buried 20 of our brothers and sisters. A year later, and the village has continued to grow and thrive. We now have a population of 120 people. Good afternoon, everyone. I've called this meeting because Hope's water purification system is in need of repairs, which means for the next three months, we as a community will have to ration food and water. I said, now at a parliamentary session that was in full swing. We can put in place a system where for the next three months, we all eat once a day and bath once a week, suggested Chris. That may be good for the short term, but for the long term, I propose we put in place a system that ensures every member of the community has to work for food and water, and enemies of the village should be left to starve in prison, I said. 
This caused the 20 members of parliament to whisper amongst themselves. We have new mothers, children and the elderly to consider and leaving people to starve to death is inhumane, responded Chris. We live in an inhumane world where bandits can attack without notice and we need all hands on deck to ensure we survive as a community. Not doing so is a luxury we simply can't afford, I pointed out. My words fell on deaf ears and Chris's proposal was put ahead of mine. I returned to my room very frustrated only to find an old Chinese man dressed in a black government issue suit seated casually in my chair. Who are you and how did you get into my room? I asked. My name is Zhu Man, but you can call me Zhu, said the old man. Okay Zhu, what are you doing in my room? I'm here to give you something that will make them listen to you, said Zhu. Which is? I asked. Power, responded Zhu, then firing a bolt of purple energy from his eyes, which hit and threw me across the room. Every aspect of my body inside and out felt like it was on fire for a good 15 minutes. After the pain passed, I stood up feeling very different and very powerful. An hour later, I recalled Parliament for an emergency meeting. I have called you here to ask that you reconsider my earlier proposal, I said. Winston, is this why you called us here? We've already decided as a group how we're going to move forward as a community. Our decision isn't going to change in an hour, said Chris. I'm sorry to hear that, I said, then firing an energy blast at Winston, which disintegrated him in an instant. Is there anyone else who believes Parliament can't change its mind within an hour? I asked, seeing the fear in the eyes of everyone who sat in the room. It is then I realized being a god was far more effective than being a leader. Elsewhere, Barnabas and I took in the mountain area as they continued their travels. I have a joke for you. A boy breaks an old vase at a rich uncle's house. The uncle gets extremely angry and yells, Do you even know how old the vase was? It was from the 17th century. The boy sagged in relief. Oh, good that it wasn't new, said Barnabas. Eyes responded with a blank look. Making you laugh is hard, but I love a challenge, said Barnabas, ready to unleash another joke. That is the end of episode 5, but before we go, answer this episode's question. As a Christian, what do you think about Chris's proposal to Hope's Parliament? Give your answers in the comments below, as well as on our Facebook and Twitter page. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned for the next one. Until then, subscribe to Jamar Studio YouTube channel, add us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. Link to our website on all social media can be found in the description box below. See you later.